Hello, my name is Miriam Zarnagardorf, and I am delighted to be joined today by Jacob Kurtzer, who is Director and Senior Fellow of the Humanitarian Agenda at the Center for Strategic and International Studies for our inaugural Humanitarian Career Insights series. This series is intended to be short video interviews with practitioners in the humanitarian field. They will tell us about their career paths, challenges and successes to hopefully guide others in navigating the humanitarian field. So let's get started. Jacob, thanks so much for being with us today. I'd like to start with a question um, that just asks you to tell me a little bit about your current position. What are the major uh, aspects of your job and what's your day to day like? Thanks. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the director and senior fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, which is a think tank that looks at U.S. foreign policy and national security issues. In my job, we try to research, analyze, and draw recommendations to improve the way that the United States uh, carries out its humanitarian agenda. That is both how it engages with the international humanitarian system through its donorship and funding um, and its policy implications, as well as how it um, engages in foreign policy questions that have humanitarian implications, which includes but isn't limited to the way that the United States carries out its combat operations and its military activities. So we research, we convene meetings, we present public events um, to help inform the conversation and move our recommendations forward. Fascinating. That sounds like something a lot of our students would be really interested in doing. So a lot of students want to know, how did you get to where you are today? What, what places did you work um, in prior to joining CSIS? Sure, and I'll try to do this briefly, but first of all, I studied abroad while in college, which was an incredible experience, and I went somewhere. I studied abroad in Egypt. I studied abroad in Israel. Um, I dropped out of college and volunteered at the American Anti-Slavery Group um, in Boston, which was looking at um, issues in Sudan and Mauritania. And so that was how I first got uh, an understanding of this. I was fortunate to have a job on Capitol Hill working for a member of Congress on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And in that capacity, um, worked extensively on issues around Haiti, which was a humanitarian crisis of a political nature, and Indonesia, which, which was, was a, uh, after the tsunami, which was a massive natural disaster in which the United States had a, a pivotal role in, in initial early response. Um, from working for the congressman, I was able to find an advocacy position with a congressional focus at Refugees International. This was my first foray into the humanitarian sector uh, specifically and entailed both um, visits to countries affected by armed conflict um, where we did extensive interviews and wrote very brief reports and then following it up directly with the advocacy around our recommendations. I did my master's abroad again. Um, I studied abroad in Australia. Um, at the University of Queensland, and then from there, and this is key, by maintaining relationships that I had first formed while as a Capitol Hill staffer, I was able to um, apply for and, and got a job with the International Committee of the Red Cross. And that really was um, you know, where I fully formed into the humanitarian sector. I worked for them in various capacities for um, seven years, including in, in Washington, but also in country-based operations. Um, and then when I returned back to Washington, um, this position afforded me the opportunity to draw on my experiences working for an international organization to try to help improve the way that the United States carries out its own humanitarian activities. Great. So one insight for the students then is keep up the networks. Yeah. Keep in contact with people you know. There's another one coming. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, so you have a, a bit of an unconventional career uh, path, which is really interesting, I think. So how do you think your education and your experiences then prepared you for your career? Sure. Um, as an undergrad, I was a philosophy major with a citation in religious studies. So this was not my field of study. Um, but what those two degrees uh, consisted of was extensive writing, a lot of reading, um, critical thinking, making arguments, and learning different ways to present those arguments. And so I think um, you don't need to be an international relations student. You don't need to study um, development. Um, what you need to do is um, read and write and learn how to make effective arguments and in a variety of formats. Um, the other thing that I think is uh, relevant was 
that I did not have a specific uh, job in mind. Um, I maintained a fairly open, uh, I, I had an open mind about what I was wanted to do. And the job with the ICRC, the job with Refugees International, um, the job at CSIS, and the job at, at the Congressman's Office were all things that crossed my plate um, through various different ways and looked interesting at the time. And so I think being open to opportunities that are not necessarily what you've focused on or what you've honed in on, but can, um, can give you the varied experience that will make you a, um, you know, uh, interesting and qualified candidate as you go down the road um, is a really important thing, especially as you enter the field. Just being open to experiences beyond what you may have thought through that you wanted to do. Yeah, that's a great insight. So careers aren't always linear. Sometimes they Correct. can be circuitous. Yeah. So we just have to be open. Okay, so final question. What advice would you share with current GW students who would like to pursue a career in the humanitarian field? Um, uh, Talk to as many people as you can. Your, your most valuable network is your peers. Um, there's a desire to network at the highest level, but CEOs aren't going to help you find a job. Your friends who were a class ahead of you and have started at think tanks or NGOs, those are the ones who are going to help you identify good opportunities. Um, be, be as open as possible to a wide range of experiences. Um, Develop expertise. Those seem like they're at odds with each other, but they're not. Um, develop expertise. Um, and, um, you know, one of the things I think that I've observed in the sector is um, there's a need for technical skills, right? So if you like making movies, right, make learn how to do digital content. If you like making Excel spreadsheets, right, like, keep up those technical skills because there's a lot of people with international relations degrees but there aren't that many you know water and sanitation engineers and so um, your unique skill sets that you have your interests they matter and they'll make you a more attractive candidate perfect so thank you so much for joining us for this first session of the humanitarian humanitarian career insights we'll post these on our website at the humanitarian action initiative and we'll have um, many more to come thank you so much